Hi, I'm Melissa Mangiat, co-founder with Moon Andreas of the art and design studio Daily Tous les Jours. Hi, I'm Kelsey Snook. I'm a creative lead who's been working on this project. And I am based in Montreal. And I am based in Portland, Oregon. We are really excited to share our process with you today. It's been exciting to um, try out and develop our ideas and we're happy to share them with you. And first, we'll just say a little bit about us. For those of you who don't know us, we're an art and design studio based in Montreal since 2011. Our work combines play, performance, storytelling, and placemaking. This is our musical swings, an early project of ours that was created 10 years ago that got a lot of recognition. Um, it's been presented all over the world and for us an example of how playful experiences are for people of all ages. Ultimately, our work seeks to reinvent how we live together in the 21st century, whether it be a field of microphones that invites everyone to sing their heart out together, or a pavement that makes music with your shadow and invites you to dance with strangers, make music together, or a new means of transportation that lets you glide your way to work with someone of your neighborhood. High tech, low tech, the heart of what we do is to bring discovery and collaboration to public spaces. And so and speaking of public spaces, the first thing that we do on any project is get to know the people who are there. And although we were unable to travel to Cambridge, being in a pandemic, we still got to have lots of Zoom calls with the architects, with community members, and um, the school members um, to get to know you and your realities related to the project. And in that process, one of the first things we heard from Dan Aaron, the, one of the principal architects, is that this is a community park, but there's also a school on it. And so those two large community groups are who we keep in mind that give us lots of different types of people that come together for to this place. Including dogs that do all sorts of things, <laughs> that learn, walk, do sports, relax, hang out. And most Often, of these are happening at the same time, that multiple things are happening all at the same time, and they're happening all throughout the day. This site is really connected to how people use the neighborhood. There's a established walking and exercise paths that are being extended. The all along Fresh Pond, the old railway is being turned into a bike path. There are the pedestrian paths that are connecting Danahy Park all the way to our park and area. Those are ways that people walk to school or that anyone else would come to walk their dog um, or exercise down the same routes and that there are these amazing other playgrounds being uh, planned nearby. So the school, the school is key protagonist, one of the reasons why we applied for this project. Um, the Montessori approach was super inspiring to us, learning how open-ended play, self-initiated activities, and how to engage curiosity and hands-on learning are all part of ways to learn and discover the world. And it was also interesting to, uh, to see how this philosophy was applied far beyond the school environment. Right, like outside of the classroom, in the park and in the playgrounds and in the school gardens is City Sprouts, um, for example, that is using a very similar approach that happens inside the classrooms, outside the classroom. It's the opposite of just giving information as Jane Hershey, who's the director of City Sprouts said, but it's about that self-initiated discovery. So the whole place is for learning and discovery. And one thing that we discovered <laughs> by talking to students is that a favorite place is trees and how they are in themselves open-ended ways to learn and socialize and spend time together. And that it wasn't just students, but every person we had a conversation with mentioned the trees and how they use them. And that was exciting for us to hear that not, this isn't just a Montessori approach, but it's a community approach of using the site. And so if we look at the history of the site long before the school was there to really understand 
where this is right before the growth of a city there was this amazing natural resource um, of the kettle lake and fresh pond uh, becoming a place a resource for ice in the winter clay deposits for bricks and land that was eventually used for waste and that urbanization made the site have issues with pollution and flooding and so to address that from that pollution and floods, big action is needed. And luckily the city's net zero action plan has been an, an ambitious and uh, big deal to address that um, with uh, the carbon neutral footprint as well as in an um, extensive water management plan at the center. And this school happens to have the most ambitious design yet to approach those issues in combination with making it have a Montessori approach of encouraging learning through exploration all over the whole site outside of the classroom. And what that looks like on a practical level are a lot of hidden systems working for that better future. As Dan Ahrens, again, the principal architect um, one of the principal architects on the project talked about optimizing every surface available on the roof for solar power. In addition, you have these massive underground geothermal wells that are underneath in green space. There's a 1.25 stormwater tank for runoff and water management under the site. All of those things when you're walking by, you wouldn't really see. And that impressed us as well, thinking about this massive undertaking that for most people walking by wouldn't really be very noticeable. You just see a great school with a great park. Our artwork aims to make that, uh, to work with that. Yeah. If we summarize everything we learned into some key objectives, we want to encourage open-ended exploration, paying tribute to the Montessori approach that spreads all over the site. We want to nurture an inviting place for all the community to come together and, and under a landmark and a place for social activities. And we want to highlight those hidden sustainable technologies that are creating a better future. And ultimately, we want a place for people to meet there. Which is something that Jane mentioned as somebody who happens to also, she's not only the director of City Sprouts, she's also a local user. And it was helpful to hear her talk about how She's looking for a place in any um, experience, outdoor experience to think about one that you would want to come back to and tell somebody else, let's meet there. So we're keeping that in mind. The next phase that we did after interviewing people and learning the stories of the site was to prototype. For us, it's a way of life. We build prototypes to explore ideas. It's a hands-on way to create. And we started with those three key systems. Right. So remember, there's the solar energy on the roof, there's the geothermal energy underground, and there's the water management systems. Each of those models are things that we were tested in our prototyping. And so we had three big ideas. One were uh, these thermal explorations of a seating and climbing sculpture that could use mass density, mass and density, to show how just by sitting and touching it, they would show how heat is absorbed and retained. Our solar idea was thinking about uh, capturing and releasing energy to create a sculpture that moves and transforms itself with light and movement. Um, every day it would change and every season it would be different. And then our other model was thinking about water explorations, thinking about the using the same water management systems of catchment and filtration and disbursement before it falls back to the ground. Ultimately, you just saw the sneak peek um, of the three potential directions, we chose water. And this allows us to speak to the historic geology of a neighborhood, highlight the underground water management systems and work with the landscape architecture of the site. And most importantly, playing with water is fun. And it's something we know for a fact. Um, some years ago, we had a chance to develop a new product line for Vortex International Aquatic Playground manufacturer. 
And we, we've learned a lot of creating an intergenerational water feature that lets people stay wet and dry at the same time. And also, we've, they're friends of ours now, and we look forward to bringing them on board as key allies for design, engineering, and fabrication challenges. And thinking about engineering and going back to what is happening actively on the site with the water management systems, we were looking at the models for catchment and detention and flow control and filtration so that we could think about how those could be tools for playing and something that could be an above ground model for showing how they worked. And so we looked at the landscape design for seeing how that works at surface level. And if you look at the bus loop uh, where the buses are going around, and this is directly over the 1.25 million gallon water tank, um, you see these mounds that go into channels. And we thought we made models of that thinking about our own and how you could scale that at a smaller scale to be something you could play with and sit on at the same time. And, and then we are also looking at the canopies above, um, thinking about how those could be things that could catch water and bring it down. Or waste and then we water. molds with rocks um, to think about these shapes that could channel water flow as, as potential surfaces for sitting, relaxing, and climbing um, mm -hmm. for play. Inspired by natural landscapes. And ultimately, we tested flow. Right, we tested different heights and angles uh, to identify the best approach for our design. And ta-da, all of these prototypes led us to a key concept. Um, that's the sum of all these learnings that we affectionately call the dish as a place to meet, pause, have fun, explore, learn, open-ended way to use the dish. Um, but mostly it's a canopy with sculptural seating that plays with water rainy days or snowy days or sunny days, the piece is transformed with the elements. It's a living landmark, equally for kids and adults to spend time while, play, while paying tribute to the hidden extraordinary water management technologies we've talked about. It enables kids to relax after school, meet up before soccer, hide, perhaps hide, even hide to share a secret. It's also a meeting points to pick up kids for adults. Um, it's a whip somewhere you walk your dog or stretch before a run. The key, it's go ahead. <laughs> his main components um, are the canopy above that provides shade and is activated during rain events, um, doing that, collecting the water and filtering it and controlling the flow of water um, and also provides that cover during any other event. There's a sculptural seating like great tree branches and boulders. They're good for high touch play, climbing and lounging. And then there's the water that once that falls from the canopy, it can flow through onto the seating element and down to the ground. In more detail, that canopy is filtering the rainwater and um, through the dish that collects it and it funnels it down with a controlled flow onto one of the um, strategically located directed over one of the elements. The canopy has an excess flow valve through one of its legs so that any overflow would be exiting through a planned drainage location. And then the, the uh, diversion and dispersal happens over the furniture um, into a, a catchment over the surface. And ultimately can be uh, stored underground. So these are different ways for the water, man water management story to take shape. Um, and where does it take place? Our chosen location is that bridge between the neighborhood and school activities. It's connected to those critical paths and it's intersecting the, in those paths to create a landmark that you could say, let's meet there. Very close to the city sprout garden. So um, we'll end with some design considerations. The first of uh, one being the co-design. 
Um, over the years, we've worked in different ways with different communities to have them participate, whether it be brainstorm or workshops where we look at technology or design interaction scenarios together. A key part of developing the dish would be to exchange um, with the team, including educators and students to evaluate the most meaningful way um, for everyone to take part and have a sense of agency and authorship in the project. And what that could look like for you and our process together is sharing our prototyping with you that our workshops are hands on opportunities so that we can share with you where we're how we're using the water management technologies, how we're modeling it, that you could test the design elements like shapes and water flow. Yes. And now a lot of text. <laughs> so we have thought about a lot of elements in the development of these concepts with um, physical accessibility and safety. We've thought a lot about ADA requirements with the slope and forms. We've uh, gone through a lot of rounds of structural and material engineering that also keep sustainability in the material choice in mind, as well as maintenance. That's something that we would definitely do in conversation with the architects and landscape architects, as well as in the preparation of the site. Yeah, like any good public site artwork, we, we look forward to working closely um, in the detailing of all the solutions to be found. We also have thought about a maintenance schedule and have suggestions for how we would operate that. In addition to a very uh, specific um, consideration for material selection and fabrication, we have a few options that we've considered for you. Um, the metal is one option for panelized steel. Tensile membranes is another approach or a uh, recycled concrete shell. These all have different uh, qualities and implications in terms of uh, sustainability in their uh, long-term life, in their carbon footprint, um, and day-to-day uh, -day use. Yes. And lastly, but not the least, um, the architectural plans where you can see some elevations of what it looks like. It's roughly uh, 14 feet high and a little bit more than 16 feet wide in terms of installation. There's a structure that's about 16 feet diameter, the seating plan and how it fits on the site. And we'll deliver everything in 20 to 25. <laughs> Thank you so much. We've really enjoyed being able to work um, on this project and explore the ideas. Thank you. Thank you so much. Bye.